okay? Find creative two decimal places that value each pronumeral. Are we trying to find a side or an angle? We're trying to find a side, A. Eh? So therefore, which of these am I going to use? I'll use this one, because this is geared to find the side. Here it is. This is geared to find the angle. Okay. So I'm going to look at this. I'm not going to write the formula down, because I notice my formula has the letter A in it. This has the letter A, but they're not the same A. Okay. So watch carefully. In this triangle, the side I'm after is on the left-hand side. That's A. So I'm going to say A squared. Okay. Then I launch into my cosine rule. And it starts off just like Pythagoras starts off, right? What are the other two sides? 6 and 10, so I've got 6 squared and 10 squared. And then I'm going to subtract uh, 2ab cos c. So 2, here's a, here's b. And then I do cos of what? In this case, they only give you one angle, which is 56 degrees. But remember, if you actually did get told what these angles were, how do you, in terms of position, how do you know this is actually, actually the angle you want? It is opposite the side you want. Does that make sense? So there's the cosine rule. Now, this thing here is calculator fodder, right? So go ahead, punch that into your calculator. You're going to get some messy decimal stuff in there, which is fine. Can someone give me um, three or four decimal places on their answer? Three or four decimal places? What are we getting? Yeah, what do you got? 68.8985. Cool. Dot, 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 dot. I just want some decimal places. Now, here's the thing. Just like in Pythagoras, wait, is that the answer? Do I, yes, no? Yes. Now, just like in Pythagoras, this is not the length of the side. This is the length of the side squared. So I don't want that. Yeah, you're thinking, what? <laughs> my sense check is already tingling, okay? This is not the length of a side. It's been squared. So what do I do on my calculator? Take the square root. Don't approximate yet. You should always approximate last. Give me three decimal places for this. Three. Okay, that's fine. Uh, are they all? They're not all zeros, are they? So eventually, it's a four. Okay, fine. So there it is. To some number of decimal places, what does the question require? Two. So a is eight point three zero to two decimal places. Is that okay? Dunskys, right? The cosine rule is lovely. It works quite nicely. Okay. Now, uh, on your textbook, um, flip forward a few pages. I don't know how many actually. Uh, two pages. Two pages. <laughs> okay, now, we're going to do 2A again, but in the next exercise. Okay, so here it is, right here. Let's see if we can flex our, you know, our trigonometric muscles and do this again without a diagram. What are you being asked to find? Have a look. Alpha. You're asked to find alpha, which is an angle. So therefore, you can see I've rubbed off the other one because I needed space. I'm going to use this form of the cosine rule. Same rule, just geared towards a different idea. So I'm going to say cos of alpha. That's the angle I want. It equals 2. All right, let's have a look. A, B, and C correspond to the three sides here. Remember I said one is special. Which one is different to the others? The opposite one, which in this case is 10. So therefore, this is the C. This is the opposite side. So I'll make these A and B. Is that OK? So on the numerator, what will I write? 5 squared plus 7 squared take away 10 squared. You OK with that? Does that look OK? What do I divide by? 2AB, which in this case is 2 times 5 times 7. Okay, this, just like it was before, is calculator work, so you're going to get a number out of here. What number do you get? Can I get three decimal places from you? Anyone getting it? Negative? Negative 0 0.5. Yes? No? No? 37. 37? 
one. Dot dot dot. I'm getting. I'm hearing a few different answers. Just be careful with your calculator. Yeah. That looks good. Okay. Now. Um, this is clearly not the angle, right? It's negative, for starters. So um, the reason why is because this is not alpha, it's cos alpha. So what do I do? Cos inverse. Give me some decimal places. Okay. This is my unapproximated answer. So then I look at the question to work out how I should approximate. What does it want? Nearest degree. That's really nice. I don't even need to hit my degrees minute seconds button. Um, whoops. I can clearly see that's going to be 112. Now, this is a great example because I want you to pause for a moment and just look at the answer. Firstly, sense check. Does it look good? It does look good. Yeah, it even approximately. But I want you to notice something really cool about the cosine rule. It's actually the reason why the cosine rule is better than the sine rule. Do you remember the sine rule had a problem? You remember you'd find an angle like this, but then it's like, hey, sometimes you didn't find the angle, you found the base angle, right? The sine rule doesn't find acute, sorry, the sine rule doesn't find obtuse angles, but the cosine rule does, okay? Now again, wh why is that? Well, the question you're asking is this question. And I can happily answer it for you if you like. But for now, I just want you to remember that the cosine rule is superior to the sine rule. If you can choose, because sometimes you can choose, then this is the one you should use. OK? 